Put it in isolation for the next two weeks. With no, with no with the government really like that. It was on the news last night, and they'd actually, they obviously went in a freight to something. They'd go on an isolation unit inside it. Yeah, I do think that. We need to get back without blocking it from either. <laughs> associated with the upcoming closure of Gypsy Patch Lane. Um, I'm not sure if councillors went to the, the drop-in events um, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I picked up on there was that they're proposing to um, trial temporary traffic lights <coughs> at the mini Sorry. roundabout on Braden Avenue, Stoke Lane, Little Stoke Lane, so the top of uh, Braden Avenue. Um, so, when I uh, asked them the reason for this, it's um, basically they, they felt that during the last full closure in June, that um, traffic was backing up down Little Stoke Lane, mm -hmm. um, and um, what the purpose of these traffic lights is to give, as I understand it, I may be wrong, to give Little Stoke Lane more priority, um, so to keep the traffic moving on Little Stoke Lane. <coughs> So that raises the concern, if you like, that um, that will be to the detriment of traffic approaching uh, along Braden Avenue. Um, and now that we've got the Great Stoke Rabbit Roundabout um, roadworks in operation, yeah. what happened? I noticed what happened um, a few weeks ago was um, obviously with Bradley Stoke Way um, restricted, I feel uh, more traffic is trying to get down Braden Avenue. Uh, uh, you know, and onto the A38. <coughs> um, so what happened was a couple of weeks ago there were roadworks on Stoke Lane, uh, which caused a massive jam all the way down Braden Avenue, <coughs> back, back to the roundabout on Brook Way, and then the traffic backed up Brook Way all the way to here. So uh, my concern would be that if they implement a system which gives advantage to Little Stoke Lane traffic, that the same thing, it may have the same effect. Um, which basically, as soon as the traffic tails back to the end of Braden Avenue, uh, it starts blocking Brook Way. So it starts blocking traffic that wants to go straight down Brook Way towards Orpheus Avenue. So it, potentially it could be a big problem. Uh, on the other hand, I think their hope is that by using traffic lights there, they can make the whole flow of traffic more efficient, so, you know, <laughs> well, the, they may or not, may not be Brian right. Brian and uh, Fabrizio and myself attended the community engagement uh, forum, oh. and their solution was to push more traffic down Bradley Stoke Way. Yeah. I thought, well, mm. yes. bearing in mind that they knew local people had different local shortcuts, but uh, to push more traffic down Bradley Stoke Way, yeah. um, to avoid Gypsy Patch Lane, it yeah. seems to be, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, essentially, there are four ways of getting out of Bradley Stoke. Uh, obviously, we've got a bottleneck now on Bradley Stoke Way South. Yeah. If Brazen Avenue and uh, the bottom of Brook End becomes blocked, right. then there's only one way left, which is up to us to take waste. So uh, it is potentially. Well, what do you want us to do? Write a letter I, to the council? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> raising awareness. I think, uh, I think, <laughs> yeah. um, if somebody from this council goes to the stakeholder liaison group, I think you, you know you need to um, <coughs> make our make a case, you know, for our town. <laughs> okay. Well, keep 
Friday, it'd be most likely one of that, but it's not the system. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you? Oh, well, we're done. Well, I'm not going to the next one, Delhi's, but I will, yeah, definitely. But I think that they will probably say that it is a work in progress and initially they have to trial things and see how they work. And if they don't work, then I guess they will exactly change it. Yeah, exactly. that. yeah. So, yeah. Okay, that's what I was trying to tell. Because they came uh, with Sh uh, Sh the community engagement forum meeting. The officers came and they explained about the things and patterns. I think it's actually, they are also looking at the patterns. If there was a truck jam or anything, they are trying to power it. I think uh, Brian will be able to explain more because I was vice chair. He was chairing the meeting. So. Chair? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were all at the um, community engagement forum. Yeah. Um, I mean, Mark King spoke very well and he knows it's a problem. <coughs> it's not actually a situation where it's easily resolvable just like that because once you close a major yeah. route <coughs> um, down there where the bridge is going to be, I mean, it's, it's a crazy, it's incredible, isn't it? It's a lot of work. Oh, <coughs> I know in Stoke Lodge, I mean, we were very concerned right at the outset of huge amounts of traffic coming up from Little Stoke, mm. you know, coming down from Winterbourne, in fact, and then deciding, you know, the last minute or you know, that would be an easy route for them to come up because Bradley Stoke gets hellishly blocked at oh. some points. I mean, all that traffic we had, yep. you know, up at, um, you know, from, from the north end of Bradley Stoke. Um, when we were doing the uh, metro bus, and all that's been sorted, but in reality, it's not because we now we've got this, yeah. and you know, there's, there's three major works going on around South Gloucestershire at the moment. And rather than doing one bit and another bit and another bit, the idea is to try and get it all done whilst the money's actually available, because mm. otherwise, it won't be done and it needs to be done. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think, uh, um, you know, you've already said it, I mean. <coughs> process progress mm. and uh, nobody wants huge amounts of traffic coming down the road yeah i mean we try to get co traffic calming down down in stoke lane at an early stage some councillors in stoke kiffer didn't want any more uh, speed cushions or anything along little stoke well, lane you don't need them now do you no got they've got them they've got them but the reality of the matter is one of the re one of the things is if you put speed cushions in it, it does actually mean a lot of people don't want to go down that road you know, they'd rather go down another road. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, and in fact, you, you know, it will be probably um, rabbit roundabout, which they will come down from eventually, yeah. because, you know, to come down all these other little roads like this, it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. You know, even that road's got to be improved. I mean, we're discussing doing all sorts of stuff. Well, even even using, even mm. using the, the metro bus lane sacrosanct as it is to use some cars down there as well, haven't they? Well, Stephen says there's four ways out of the road. So I think virtually three of them, but almost totally blocked, aren't they? Almost. They've got to get the cars away somehow, or the cars have got to come around. But it's the monitoring, it's an ongoing basis to see, you know, like you said, you know, to change if they mm. see that there's a huge bottleneck there. Yeah. There's a there's only a certain number of options, I suppose, that they've got, but so well, they're, no they're, they're on the no, case. No shortcuts, yeah. sort of. Um, but uh, like Little Stoke Lane and that sort of thing, whereas people coming from other directions might not know that. So, mm. And their solution was pushing all down Bradley Stoke Way, which is, wow, <laughs> mm. <laughs> tremendous. So what's uh, the action out of that decision now then? Is it... Are you going to be? Well, just so we can raise it at the stakeholders' meeting. Chair, so. sure. well, I mean, the thing is, Steve is right though to bring it up because yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know um, the bit as as it comes up through Braden Avenue is a situation. A lot of people from Bradley State use that as a route, mm -hmm. and um, you know, rather than they come up all the way up around the A38, I mean, they're going to have signs to Patchway. Um, coming up Bradley Stoke Way, which they've already done before, but that's going to happen again. So they've got to patrol all the way up. I mean, the easiest route for them is to come up Little Stoke Lane and Stoke Lodge, through Stoke Lodge. Mm. But that road is incredibly busy anyway. And it's, it's a traffic. narrow road. Yeah. It's a very narrow road. It's a bit like, it's, it's narrower than the road up here. Mm. And then, you know, so the main road <coughs> Bradley Stoke Way is obviously the answer, but that gets too busy as well. Okay, so it's Sharon to bring that up at the next meeting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I also write to the, so that will be documented. So well, it'll be documented. 
seated at the meeting because yeah. they take notes from the meetings. Mm. Mm. We just get patronising replies. Mm. Or or no reply. yeah. <coughs> I've got it. Hibernation. Everyone go to hibernation for a sort of 12 months. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a little overlap. You know, one of those jet we'll just go abroad on holiday. So we're not self isolated. Okay, Steve, what's your idea? I have a second point. Um, it's the. Um, Availability of the extension car park at Brookway uh, Activity Centre. I think a lot of people in the community are very disappointed that it's not um, available for you know the peak hours of particularly the doctor's surgery. Um, there's obviously there's this business about the, um, the headlamps and everything and having to close it off at four o'clock, but that doesn't mean to say it can't be open um, for the rest of the day. Um, you know, and uh, a number of people have been <coughs> commenting about this online, you know, to say that they, um, they had difficulty finding a parking space and people have been parking on the access road, yeah. which was the original problem when, when, when this, this uh, suggestion came up. And I can relate my own experience. I went, had an appointment at the doctor's surgery on Friday, early on Friday morning, and I got there at um, 10 past eight, and it, there was no problem with parking. Um, but when I came out at 10 to 9, because um, I'd had to wait quite a long time, the car park was completely full. Yeah. There were four cars parked down the access road. Mm. There were cars shunting backwards and forwards trying to find a space, which makes it very a very dangerous mm -hmm. situation, particularly with elderly people and, and frail people going to the doctors. And I looked over to the extension car park and it was empty. Mm. And the barriers were there, albeit one or two of them would have fallen down. And then I glanced over to the activity centre and it was open. And we've been told that um, the car, the extension car park is supposed to be open when the activity centre is in use, but it wasn't. So I, <coughs> I popped in and went to the caretaker and said, now why isn't the extension car park open? And he said, oh, sorry, I forgot. Well, I mean, you know. It needs to be better managed, yeah. and, I, and I think a lot of people would like to see it open all the time, yeah. and uh, would like to see the council come up with an idea, uh, a, a management scheme, whereby it can be left open, say, between 8am and 4pm. Yeah. We, we accept it. Just because of headlights, isn't it, basically, at the moment? Yeah, which so will be I think we have to accept it. Can, months, yeah, so it can close yeah. at 4pm, but the peak hours of the doctor's surgery is, I think, 8am oh, eight, yeah. till 10 yeah, yeah, probably okay. maybe yeah. maybe twelve o'clock. Yeah. So I think people's expectation is that efforts are made to 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 make parking available during those hours. And I thought we were going to plant a lot more trees and uh, to, to provide a bigger screen, but obviously if we have, it's not working. Uh, well, well, yeah, well, I'm not well, talking yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, <coughs> well, a couple of things. I mean, I mean you know, the doctor's surgery is. <coughs> The doctor's surgery expanded its size as <coughs> Bradley Stoke has expanded its size, and in fact, it expanded its size even after Bradley Stoke expanded its size. Um, there was planning permission granted um, for um, the doctors to have a surgery with them improving the size of the car park. Mm. That was actually given them. Um, that particular application was put in by the doctor's surgery after they'd been refused an application where they hadn't actually put in extra parking. It had been pointed out by South Gloucestershire and um, planning, uh, planning members on that uh, you know, committee, which I was a part of at the time, um, that they should be putting an application in with some car parking. So they did, and it was passed. The thing was, what they did also do was to put in an appeal for the original application, which was refused by South Gloucestershire, which didn't have the extra parking, which they had land for to do, and which Bradley Stoke was quite happy to give them a little bit <coughs> of extra, edge, extra edge to, to, to put extra parking. It's quite a lot of extra parking. So they just went ahead and they didn't actually build the parking. So, in actual fact, we've got a doctor's surgery, which um, is a business. They make money, they earn cash. And then there's um, a community centre, which has got uh, an amount of parking, which was overrun sometimes for the doctor's parking. And it was de decided um, to actually use that as a piece of land for some extra parking. It was unfortunate because the levels weren't uh, looked at into properly, 
and rather than actually scraping out um, the, uh, the courts and building the thing level, it was determined by someone to save some money and actually just have it so that it was a slope up to the car park. So anyway, so we're getting back to where we are now. Um, there's a management thing put in place by private slope to actually close it at a particular time but open it all the rest of the time at the moment. And if that's not been done, you actually went in and saw one of the managers there who apologised to you. Yeah. Okay, no, sorry, he apologised to you, Steve. And the reality of the matter is, we can certainly remind our managers to make sure that it is be adhered to, and we apologise to you that you've had that convenience yeah, no. and you've had to bring it up. That isn't the extent of the issue, believe, though. I don't, no. believe, I don't believe there's a situation where we no. should be doing anything else. Brian, what we've been told by the council is that the, the, car, the extension car park is closed when the caretaker leaves after the last booking, which you know could be 10 a.m., could be 12 p.m. When the caretaker leaves, the extension car park is closed. Well, if the, if the actual car park is closed, the extension car park is closed, okay, and there's no bookings... Or if there's no bookings... There's no, there's no bookings in that, in that other car park. Surely there's a lot of spaces there, or people that park in their car all day live locally. I mean, be quite right. frankly, that's quite a big space of car parking okay. spaces. If the centre is closed, that extension isn't really necessary, because that is a huge overflow park for the, for the, for the doctors. But it doubles the size of their parking. That isn't the experience that I've had. Well, I'm sorry, but if, it, if, if, the, if the building's closed and the, and the caretaker's gone home, then I cannot see it as a problem. If the, if the community centre is open and the extension to the car park is open at the same time, surely, surely, you know, I don't understand because we've, we've increased the amount of parking there so that we've got some extra parking for people who are going to use the centre. You know, it's inconvenient that effectively it's causing a problem for people with lighting. But that, that extension to that car park hasn't been built there for the doctor's surgery. It's been built there for the community centre. What's the logic behind closing it? What's the logic behind closing it at any time? Because the lights were... Basically what you've got is you've got, you've got a slope by that <coughs> at a car park up onto that flat area. And the gentleman which actually lives opposite, whose wife has got... Um, I met her actually, and she has got a major problem. And lights actually shone right up into the house, right up into the bedroom windows, in fact. Um, there has been demonstrated, we had some photographs down here. Um, if you part, I mean, that is that is the slope, which is absolutely crazy. Well, Brian, this is crazy. Brian, this isn't the issue that I'm bringing to the council. No, no, I've the actually answered that. So I've you're talking that. about what happens after when it No, no, no sorry, Terry yeah. asked me a question, so yeah. I'm yeah. answering yeah. 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 Well, yeah. the point I'm bringing to the council is what's happening during the daylight hours, if you like. Yeah, it should be open, shouldn't they? But it should be open. Yeah. 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 So. <coughs> Is there another person? The community centre is open. They've got all that extra parking anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's not up to Friday's so, yeah. to provide parking for doctor's surgery. If you want to go at anybody, have a go at the doctor's surgery because they've got the land, they could build it, they've got plenty of cash coming in, they could do it. It's not a problem. When we initially looked at the car park extension, the doctors were actually involved and were part of the plan to extend the car park on their side, and they made a decision from their financial point of view to not proceed. That's no, but also yeah. South Gloss wouldn't, <coughs> didn't get the go-ahead for the extension on their side because it was taking out trees. That's the reason we've got the slope, is to collect trees and things to get out. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to have it level originally, but we couldn't because we would destroy the tree yeah, growth tree around, yeah. around the tennis courts. Yeah. So we had we were we had our hands tied behind our back in terms of what we wanted to do in the first place. Yeah. It wasn't a cost saving measure at all. We wanted to level the whole thing. That was what we were trying to do at planning, and we were told we couldn't do that uh, because of the Yeah, well what I what I did, I asked for, for effectively for local members to be involved with the um, <clears throat> the planning itself on, on the on the uh, how do you put it? Um, the work which had to be done and I think if I'd been involved with the planning which I wasn't as a local member you know we were cut out of it so it's basically trying to start dealing directly with the planners so that was that so you didn't have that because I, I could have I could come in there, I could have come in there and argued it because we yeah. can always plant trees somewhere else effectively TPOs those trees were not TPO'd. So they could have come out. Yeah, but part of the planning process we went through in these committee stages in our own internal council, we were debate we were debating it well not debating, we were just discussing a lot of that stuff. It's all minutes, it's all mm -hmm. noted as to why we had to go down that way. That's right. 
And we weren't, we were not as a council trying to say we're going to skimp and save money to put a ramp in so we're just on top of the tennis courts. We had people raising genuine concerns about damage to the plant life okay, around the yeah, area. And we were saying that we had to we had to do that. We we'd preferred to have gone the other route. We 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 by trying to satisfy one requirement, unfortunately we've now introduced another problem Agreed. that has to be remedied. Absolutely. Um well this wouldn't be this wouldn't be an issue for us if we'd had a flat flat level because then we'd have dug down a foot or two or whatever it is, it's about a foot. And, but that we were, we were told we couldn't do that because we damage all the surrounding plant life. And it was deemed at the time that plant life would actually shield that housing mm. from mm. the rear. And if we did anything to destroy that, the hedge line or that hedgerow, that would be deemed impractical and unbeneficial to our surrounding neighbours. Well, where, where, the, where the car park extension is, is, is built, okay, what bit of hedge line have you damaged? We haven't damaged no. anything. Well, you wouldn't have damaged it anyway. Even if you no, no, no. We, were told, we were told if we dug down that car park yeah. to the level we wanted to dig down to, we would damage the root structure of the surrounding plant life that would have an impact on everything around it. Well, so all that plant then, life around what was there at the time of that tennis court, we were trying to avoid damaging it. They were lying then, weren't they? Well, they were still lying. We were dealing with this. Anyway, yeah. 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 I, I think you're going to be dug out from the core Chair. problem. Mm -hmm. I think the right now, the futuristic one is to really shield that place and open it. Because yeah. otherwise, we'd exactly. be a big investment. <coughs> Should this go to plan? Is to no, all we need to do yeah, is we, we just remind, we'll remind the leisure assistants that they need to make sure so when the site is open, the car park Lots is open. open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, I think part of the problem is that the car park isn't available when the activity centre is closed. That's part of the problem. It's that's the other to, issue I'm bringing here. Sugar, is it? And, uh, and I don't think the concern is after 4pm because uh, things aren't that busy then. So I think all this uh, discussion about ramps and trees is irrelevant to the point that I'm bringing here. Yeah. But that's the reason why it's it is really yeah, the reason it's shut the lane solution. But but the ramp well, kind of, yeah. surely but the lights, you know, on a car going up the ramp, okay, might dazzle the second floor. But as soon as the car is on the level, um, surely the lights don't dazzle any further. Shouldn't affect it. Shouldn't affect it. So it's only that split second when the cars are going up the ramp that the lights are to at a, an acute angle that shines upon the second, <coughs> second floor bedroom, surely. I mean, they're making a mountain out of a molehill, surely. Yeah. But John I mean, Randall told me that he's planning to put the shield, that screen. Well, yeah. But any progress with that? I think you're saying part of that project. There's a screen up yeah, and we've planted more trees, yeah. 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 That's, what, that's what we're doing for now, yeah. Yeah. until the trees take root yeah. and we've planted. But we yeah. will. We so, will speak to the leisure systems and so, yeah, uh, see what we can do to get but it open. That's only solving half of the issue that I've there. raised. The other issue is that when the activity centre isn't in use, the extension car park isn't in use. And that's potentially a problem as well. So why can't there be some system, I'm not proposing anything, whereby the car park, the extension <coughs> car park is opened at the beginning of the day, 7 a.m. And closed at four. That's four what I just said. Let's go to the leisure assistance yeah. and see what we can do. When, right. we, when we proposed the closure of the car park, what exactly did we propose and have seconded and voted on to which enabled the plan, which enabled that to happen? The exact wording. Do you have it in the minutes? From what? We, we, at one stage, we yeah. voted to say that that car park should be closed at a certain period of time. Due to the complaints we had from residents, so what was it we actually proposed? Was it a time frame, yeah. which is it closes after four o'clock and it's open yeah. regardless of the centre's open or not, or yeah. was it it closes when the centre closes? Yeah, it closes at four o'clock. That's a closure at four o'clock. That was a proposal. We didn't make it. Sorry? Four o'clock. Is that what we said? Was it a full council meeting? Was it a planning meeting? No, it was a full council meeting. I think it was that in November when I was there, I think. Yeah, that's right. Oh, right. Because that will just put the issue to bed, because we've voted on it already. But it's open till 4. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, is, yeah. was the proposal initially for the closure when the measure assistant leaves, or was it as. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure, but I know short, <coughs> shortly after that had been decided, I went up there just simply to take a photograph of it, and I found that... There was never a proposal made, it just said premises manager John Randall agreed to not open the car park past four o'clock whilst investigations are taking place. Oh, right. So to me that implies when the centre's open, it's open four it four should be four o'clock. And, four and, four and four later in the summer, basically. <coughs> Be, but well, eight o'clock in the summer. Um, we will speak to the yeah. leisure system <coughs> and yeah. we will put something in place. Okay, right, number two. <coughs> Apologies for absence. Mm -hmm. no? Hang on a second. Oh, right. Sorry. I haven't got any points. Uh, yes, I have uh, Councillor Elaine Hardwick and the representative from Bradley State and Blue. Number three, declarations by members under the local government tax. Any, <coughs> any changes? No? no? We all happy with that, I mean? Right. <coughs> Announcements by the chair. I've just got a couple of things I'd like to say. How extremely disappointed I was with the uh, planning application for McDonald's. Starbucks at the Willow Brook. <coughs> yeah, yeah. How one inspector can overrule two or three hundred objectors, Bradley Stoke Town Council, headmaster of the school, and uh, no less than 16 district councillors from all political persuasions, plus you know, all the district councillors locally. How one person can overrule that, and there doesn't seem to be any method of challenging it. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, under the current proposal, <coughs> planning inspectors are, are a total law unto themselves. And, you know, it's not even decided by a panel, just one person. So, very, very disappointed in that. Is there really no way of... Uh, the sector in the High Court, on a point of legality, which uh, doesn't necessarily mean they change the decision, even if they find out there was a, a point of illegality on it. And that's the only challenge you can have. But is there a criteria that says, you know, you, if you've got that wealth of opposition, yeah. how is it, what rules say that that person, just one person, can overrule it? That's the way it's set up. <coughs> it's pretty appalling, isn't it? I think. But there you go. It just doesn't seem to... That's, uh, you're it stuck with it now, and when all the chickens come out to roost, and... Uh, you have trouble getting onto the Willowbrook because of traffic Yeah, but they won't be bothered because they will have their money, won't they? Because that's what it's oh, all yeah, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all money. Yeah, it's all money related. Yeah. Greed. Yeah, yeah. That's the power of McDonald's. I mean, I'm told that uh, uh, having somebody who's seen McDonald's in action is uh, uh, they, they bring in top barristers. Mm. And it's like a, like a court of law, you know, <coughs> these uh, um, appeals. And you've got no chance. The, the average person has got no chance. Mm -hmm. So we're stuck with that. Sure. Um, the other thing, which uh, Frankie will know about, um, is that South Gloucestershire have set aside a fund of 30,000. This is the whole of South Gloucestershire for celebrations for VE Day in oh. June. Okay? For which individual parishes and towns can lodge a request against. Mm -hmm. But that depends. Uh, of course, we need to decide yeah. what sort of celebrations we like. Um, I mean, this is probably for full council, but one full council can't do when the next full council is. <coughs> there is a group who are, uh, group who are getting together, right. who are looking at various options for uh, celebrations for We can have a few few quid out of that. Yeah, yeah. so they are if, aware if, of it. If, if we do it quickly, because other, other yeah. parishes and towns would be also putting in their bids as well. Yeah. So, so what is it? Sarah, have something on the green. It's right the here. Bradley Stoke Carnival Committee. Oh, they're re-erecting oh, right. re re themselves. I'm not sure whether they've been oh, in right. contact with <laughs> <laughs> you yet, Marion. I think they're having a meeting this week and they are going 
someone's going to the meeting with the forms to apply right. for the grant funding. So, so, yeah, so, right. so, yes. so we got yeah. no idea yeah. what we're going to do. Well, it's not yeah. us, it's the carnival. Yeah. I think yeah. we yeah. should, yeah. as a council, yeah. 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 we should collaborate with them yeah. to do something. We yeah. should feed in our ideas of what we Not just the group, but as a council, we should collaborate with them. So if anyone's got any ideas on that, yes, Tom? Yes, uh, do you have any other points? Otherwise, I would like to support what Councillor Franklin mentioned. As it's a voluntary group that's been doing it for all the years of the Carnival Committee, yeah. I think it's better to actually they've run it and we support it yeah. and help them. And I think it's yeah. a wonderful yeah. opportunity. <coughs> so it's in Pan Wall Street, yeah. and they talk to me, and uh, so that I give them my more support, and that's the yeah. week of me, so then we have to explain, see uh, the feasibility of that, how children's schools can be involved in other things. Oh, yeah. If we're quick enough, we might get two or three thousand out of Santa Claus, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, any more I think it might be, might be uh, yeah. deemed to be a bit greedy, but... <laughs> Let's yeah. see, uh, but uh, that will be a good opportunity. Yeah. Can I, as Chair of the Council, can I make some announcements to actually add on? Go on that, yeah. no, 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 thank no, you. No. Yeah. So, thank you, and I think you also joined me in for the Chinese New Year celebrations, yeah, good. Uh, which was good, and a yeah. uh, few other celebrations as well as the school's programs which I attended. No, you joined me. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, also really just to want to actually, last yeah. week, last, was last Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, last yeah. Saturday. Uh, the Indian High Commission done a Council of Campbell here, which a Council of Franklin attended, and it was relatively more than 400 people came and found. So that was actually the first time in our history done. Mm -hmm. And just uh, right now also, as we were being part of the multi faith Forum, just inform that 23rd of February, that is next Sunday, they are putting up a program with Diverse Doors Open Day, opening up doors of all faith groups, traveling through, exploring it. It's a faith train. It's called Diverse Doors Open Day. Morning from Sunday morning. Where's then that? Bristol. Uh, right. Different parts, Gurudwara, Senegal, uh, the Moors Church, Greek Orthodox Church, and all sorts of places, Hindu Temple, everywhere. So the seven places are going. So that will be a wonderful thing. I will request everyone to join. Thank you. Okay. Right. Chair, <coughs> this is the <coughs> next meeting of the Carnival, which is looked at 6th of March, 1 p.m. Are you on that? Salt talk, yeah. Are you are? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, what is that? Some good ideas then for yeah. What, what is that? It's 6 of March, 1 p.m. The next, the next meeting. Um, we've already had one meeting. Tom, I'm not sure you actually managed to get to that meeting or not. I think yeah. you did manage to get to it. Um, so we've had the one meeting. Um, right. And they're, we've been getting some stalls and things like that right. up together as well. Okay. So uh, yeah. the next meeting is the 6th of March. I'll be on here with it. So, uh, you know, well, Barry said Radio's involved with it as well. Okay, thanks for that then. So, it has got some money out there, is it? So, is it... They've got a few pounds from the last previous cap counts, um, cap yeah. uh, but it's only a few quid in the, in the till. Yeah. And um, I think a few people, I think Sarah and Franklin haven't been approached yet to put anything in from the last money. Um, but that was an idea to try and get it, get it started. However, because this money is available from South Gloucestershire mm -hmm. at the moment. They're looking to tag that in. Um, so they've got the forms ready to, to oh, go with that one. Right. That's good. So, uh, that's and good. and it, in reality, it, it, it does something quite important, actually, oh. to link it in with that. So that's quite mm -hmm. good. What's the day it's actually happening? Um, so May, May 8th. Friday, Friday, Friday the 8th of May, I think it is. Right. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, think, I think it's, I think it's, the it's on the cusp of... Yeah. Um, Tom's still being mayor, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of it, I think. Okay. So it's not in June. Right. No, no, it's, it's actually the bank holiday. I mean, the other, the other card was always bank holiday, but it was always a problem because the, the situation is that a lot of people are on holiday. As far as I was concerned, it was a great time for a situation where people that couldn't afford to go on holiday in August had another celebration. That was the whole idea of putting it in August in the first place. However, it did mean that lots of groups, like Brownie groups and <coughs> groups, um, was more difficult to, to do because a lot of people in those groups were on holiday. Mm. So to bring it forward uh, and have it That's before June was more, more, more relevant, possibly. The only, only thing uh, about, about that is, now that this other funding has come up, 
So it's been planned for good sort of seven months, eight months. Yes, Tom. Yeah, 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 this one ran because it's fine for the school. I've been to the school recently, primary school. When I explained this one, the idea of the celebration, many people and teachers, they were also happy to join in and they said they welcome it. Which primary school? Yeah, the Brookway. Uh, the the, 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 the Boseland. Boseland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's the, your yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. It's going it's oh, to be a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier, I think, um, to do that. So. Okay, so they've got to give it a go, haven't they? Really? <laughs> what's, the, okay. what's the feedback from your son? Yeah, he was happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Are all the schools being invited to join as well, though? Yeah. yeah. They are. They are. They are. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> you hope? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a proposal. To all the schools will be involved. Oh, that's right. Right. Secondary school. That was one of the things which I proposed, which they agreed. And afterwards, they happily agreed. And it's actually hard work. And uh, mm -hmm. thanks for the people who've been elected treasurer. Sure, I hope they will trust and the secretary they will explain it. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that all on that one then? Right, let's yeah. move to confirm the minutes of the meeting now on the 16th of December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I have a proposal for that. Okay. Second okay. Right, All those in favour? <coughs> Okay, we deal with matters arising from the minutes held on December 16th, not coming elsewhere on the agenda. Update on Brookway Activity Centre Development. This is just to say we're awaiting the installation of the drop down bollards. So we won't have orange barriers, we'll have drop down bollards. Okay, yeah. right. Thank you. Update on provision of leisure equipment on the Jubilee yeah. Centre, on the Jubilee Green. That one and the next one, the Mooga, they're also having grounds report. Right, okay. So. Right, so the next one is <coughs> 7.1, one, which is Greg's report. So over to you, Greg. You have that tabled? Yeah. Uh, yeah, tabled, uh, two pages in front of you, and some photos. Um, okay. <coughs> on the back of uh, the photos are from our, well, it's become a bit of an annual event now, our Girl Project Xmas ice skating trip. And as the years go by, it's become busier and busier. So we had uh, you know, 20, 22 uh, girls and young women attend um, that event. Uh, the numbers are up and around that on a weekly basis now. We're getting new uh, members joining and we're keeping most of the older members, which is good. Um, yeah, it's a, that's, a, that's a very positive part of our work at the moment. Um, well, our reg 
Technica, the youth work sessions at Skate Park. The building is coming in very useful <coughs> there because the weather, particularly on Thursday nights, I've never known uh, in the six years or whatever I've been here, I've never known such a run of appalling weather on a particular night. Um, so we tend to do double or extended sessions there and not do the Jubilee session here and just get the leisure assistance. So that session is often like 4.30 till 9 o'clock. It's quite a long session, but they're really positive and you get quite a throughput right. of... Um, Could they use a skate park when it's pouring down with rain or is it... Is it well, no, but that's the benefit of having the building. Even if the skate oh, park yeah. is not in use, yeah. the building yeah. is providing yeah. a building-based youth work yeah. uh, okay. resource. Right. Uh, and as I say in the report further down as well, um, People turn up now, even though it's pouring down with rain. So they're not turning up just to use a skate pole, they're turning up to come to a youth work session in the building. Mm -hmm. um, young volunteers, um, we've got, as I mentioned before, two young people, a young woman, year, these are year 12 volunteers, uh, part of their volunteering component, uh, which I have now as year 12s. Um, she works with me every week. Uh, we've got another young person who I see occasionally, but part of his pro uh, product design is he's working up design ideas and things for the development of the inside of the shipping container and hopefully will be involved in development of some items of furniture. Uh, we're now joined every Thursday by a Year 10 volunteer who uh, he's going to be doing his work experience uh, the last week of term with me. So that's really good because he's working on stuff. He's a skate park regular uh, and he's getting involved with events and <coughs> start updating some of our social media, the skate, book, skate park Facebook page and Instagram sites, etc. Um, Theatre and education. The... Um, this sort through the police, but they've offered funding because there was multi-agency concern, which I've reported before, um, around, uh, particularly in the schools, there was a lot of concern around um, um, sort of developments of county lines and knife crime, even though county lines, according to the police, have not become a real issue in South Gloucestershire of yet. Uh, one of the things we looked at was some theatre and education work. So we've got a theatre company called Auto Ego, who have a very good reputation. They're doing um, one particular performance around uh, child criminal exploitation in the schools and some other South Gloss youth projects. But in this area, we're doing stuff around uh, knife crime. So it complements what's going on in the schools. So. We're going to have a performance in this very room Tuesday week. Um, that's sort of focusing on the girls' project because it's like the logical group to do the stuff with because the other stuff we do is mainly sort of detached and we haven't got the space. So that's what we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks' time. So I'll give you some feedback on how well that goes. Uh, we approved previously um, paving the outside area at the skate park where we talked about outside the building. Um, that's starting now. Uh, well, well, we'll start after half term. We uh, didn't think it was a good idea to start this week when we thought it might be busy there, but obviously with the weather at the moment, not so busy. Um, staff training. <coughs> so, and this sort of links with the recruitment thing. It's a problem, as I've reported before, um, about recruitment of part-time youth workers at the moment. We're still continuing, uh, hoping to work with the youth work partners. Um, these are the people we initially submitted the bids for the South Gloss money, which we've drawn down, the revenue money. So that's working with Southern Brooks and FACE and Thornbury, etc. Um, but yeah, we're, we're developing a training package with South Cross Council as well um, uh, around induction uh, training for potentially new youth workers. So we're hoping that will be part of the recruitment package that uh, we can sort of, that, sort of advertise really the opportunities at the same time as trying to get people involved with some induction training. Um, the other part 
let's sort of expand on that a bit. Food chair, food cloud, uh, they're the people we get a lot of free food and stuff from. Uh, had a, a review meeting with them. Um, they're very pleased with what we're doing, but they're also pleased to see that um, the kitchen is going to be refreshed soon as part of the redevelopments. So they're pleased to see that. <coughs> right, Jubilee Green Fitness area. There has been, uh, we seem to have uh, woken up a few of the people who we've been chasing. All of a sudden, I've got, uh, I haven't got everything to write a report yet, but we've got a lot of sort of, if you remember um, a couple of months ago, well, four months ago, we approved the options we, what we wanted for the Jubilee, and we were going for uh, a calisthenics type approach with some more traditional equipment. We've now had that option interpreted with another, one company has actually sent me five options based around that, costing between uh, 29,000 and 80,000. Um, and I'm awaiting other proposals in terms of their mugger costings. That's the thing I'm, uh, because we have to do, extend the hard courts by that additional strip that's like the fly in the ointment really in terms of getting some clear costings because we have to extend that to keep it compliant with sports england and other dimensions in terms of court markings but yes it is it is sort of moving i've had a few conversations with sport england around um, possible monies uh, there are still a fair amount of pots of money for capital funding which is good so Hopefully it's all starting to come together a bit, so I'll have a more positive, uh, hopefully we'll move forward on that and I'll have a report for you in two months time with a clear costing option which we can then use for the fundraising stage in detail. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. Right. Was the Jubilee Green Fitness area, that 29 to 80, is that? in our budget or is that outside? No, there's a very small amount of pump priming money. The idea is to try and link that with the, the multi-use games area oh, okay. and to draw down some significant funding. Okay. A bit like the skate park, we, mm. we use mm. a, a fifth of the... <coughs> Any other questions for Graham? <coughs> So this Tuesday one, how, uh, what time? What time is the program? The, Sorry, the Tuesday program you mentioned Tuesday every week, the girls program. Girls project, yeah. Yeah. What time to what time is that? The core session times are seven to nine, but they tend to start arriving <laughs> any time after half six. <laughs> so we don't make them stand at the door. So they, if they come early, they come. But the most important thing is without going into sort of detail, is the, the support work we also do around that in terms of one-to-one -one support around mental health issues and other things like that, which um, often happen outside of those sessions. You mentioned about 20 children, uh, 20 girls are coming for that program, really? Yeah, pretty much okay. so. It's okay. somewhere between, uh, yes. like I said, we took 22 on the actual trip, uh, but any week, uh, the minimum you'll get is about 15, but sometimes up to 24, but fairly sort of consistent. Mm -hmm. okay. So is it primarily from the secondary school here, or what is the criteria of giving? It's 13, 13 to uh, 17 is the, the core age range. Okay. <coughs> Where is it from? Sorry. Okay. I was just going to say, you've got the resource then, have you, to do one-to-one -one mental health? Discussions with them? Well, I'm, I'm a professionally qualified youth worker. I'm a Thrive licensed practitioner. But I've done lots of one to one stuff. So, what I see it more as is supportively signposting. So, um, for example, like I say, I've got being filmed and stuff. So, um, well, I was thinking more about because there's only one of you, I think, isn't there? There is only one of you. There's only one professional yeah. worker. Yeah. I work with 
to other people, yes. And in regards to the mental health, because I'm just thinking that's actually taking, that's actually expanding quite significantly now, isn't it? The need for people or young people to have the, the uh, opportunity of discussing their mental health, you know, with all things about social media and all of this type of thing. And I was just really wanting to understand if 30, do you say, people turn up on a week, whether they could all be seen uh, or they could all have a discussion with you or the other people? I, th I think the most important thing is that you or we as a project or as a youth work provision are seen as being what I always talk about as being psychologically accessible. So they're not just coming to a space, but they feel that they are able to maybe raise issues. Mm. So I always talk about the notion of supportive signposting. Yeah. And what I mean by supportive signposting is not just saying, oh, here's a leaflet, go off down or off the record, but having a conversation <laughs> about how, now there's one person for example who following the Tuesday session came in talked to me at the Thursday session, updated me on some stuff, talked about accessing, well, there's an organisation called Cooth now which is like online counselling for young people which is freely accessible uh, and uh, not feeling confident about phoning that organisation so we've arranged to that she comes to see me, I phone the organisation for her, introduce, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's about, it's like, yeah. a lot of the yeah. stuff is getting over the threshold to access provision and I think mm -hmm. professional youth work when it's done well is helping do that. So stuff around LGBT issues or mm -hmm. racism or whatever, I think young people see how you respond to those issues mm. and if you're responding to those issues as part of your day-to-day -day activity so you know that i think gives them the confidence to then make approaches i completely agree i just think it seems a lot for one person or a couple of people to be dealing with like 30 potentially 30 well it's not all going to happen at, you know, all at once yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, but yeah, that, that, that's what you do. There's a lot of, there's specialist agencies out there, there's not enough and there's not enough time, and they're all in. And I mean, you look at, you know, Cairns, for example, and, you know, children's mental health agencies, there's often six months waiting lists for young people to access Cairns. Um, uh, so it's not good. But the issue is now something that people are at least starting to talk about. Yeah. And after, like, Happened to Caroline Flap at the weekend and That's the rest of really it. There, there, there's, sort of, there's various media moments that put those sort of things into mm -hmm. the sort of public focus in a greater way. Yeah. It's just how long they stay in the public focus and what we do with them, and that we yeah. don't forget about them in a short space of time again. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Don't mention uh, one more thing. One thing. You mentioned regarding racism. Uh, how many children? Race that uh, issue as an issue. Race. How, how many is it an issue? How many children come with racism as an issue? They're not necessarily talking <coughs> racism as an issue. I would but say. You mentioned that. You, you I, I, no, I didn't. I did mention it. Yeah. yeah, and I mentioned it because having worked in multicultural environments in Central Bristol for many, many years, mm. I did find. That when I first started working in Bradley Stoke, it was like rewinding 10, 15 years in terms of the amount of challenge I would be making as a youth worker to a lot of the attitudes of young people. Okay. So I think I think it's not about necessarily. Um, it's about proactively. Um, okay. Promoting. So there's nothing. It was like a sort of question. Yeah. So it was. Is it happening here or not? That was my question. So how many happened in Bradley Street? So nothing? Or yes or no? Five numbers, two numbers? I think that I think there's a lot of what well, in terms of racism. Yeah, you mentioned that. That's I, right. I would say I have, there's a lot of racist attitudes, yes, I would say. Okay, so but you don't have any. But uh, out of these twenty two or twenty three children you mentioned, how many from other big backgrounds? Um, currently there's there's I think two mixed 
race, dual multi-heritage young people. There's, there's young people from Polish backgrounds, for example. So uh, if, um, if you're talking about, I don't know if you're talking about people of colour or people from diverse yeah. backgrounds, <laughs> but we are, we are getting people who, you know, like issues around racism towards Polish people, for example, is, is quite common, I think, um, unfortunately, no. now, and increasingly so. Yeah, any kind of racism can have to be challenged, but one of the things which, because the ethnic makeup of the Bradley Strip right now is 20% of the people from other ethnic backgrounds, so, but I couldn't see anybody representation in that group, so that's the reason why I asked you specifically, because, mm. yeah, so, one of the things. Um, that's just for your advantage, so if sometimes in future, if they're right, you're right. Uh, but it, it's, I think you're totally right. I, I've, always, I've always been struck by and I'm more than happy to have a longer conversation with you because the, the makeup of Bradley Stoke, there is a significant minority ethnic population, in fact the biggest within South Gloss, but yeah. that's not necessarily exactly. represented either within the mainstream secondary schools, is it? There is, there is. There is. You, say twen- you would say 20% of Bradley Stoke the secondary scholars, school? Even in the top scholars of Bradley Stoke school, <coughs> the yeah. we are just for information. So it doesn't matter, I don't actually no, consider the, the last, sti- the last statistics I saw, it was not representative I of don't know, the, the wider, of the wider about, community. I'm not no. sco- talking about you the sports. Do you want to have a chat with the... Yeah, no, no, yeah. this one yeah. is yeah. a council is an opportunity, because yeah. this one, you mentioned I always this, it's a continued license and meetings with the councillors, but I haven't seen any much contract from you, so that is actually one of the opportunities to actually talk to you regarding that, that's reason. Right, we all finished on that one then? Yeah, can I just say one thing? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think this thing about um, the state of flag, which came up, <coughs> which was very sad. And um, <clears throat> there's a few people who have actually made the comment now about trying to be a bit kinder to each other. Mm. Um, and I've seen quite a few posts which have not actually back there recently, which have been on uh, the media about saying things like, you know, if you haven't got anything good to say about somebody on the internet, then you shouldn't say it. Mm. <coughs> I'm quite frank with you, I mean, we've got a media person here tonight, mm. and, you know, the reality is, I think there's too much of it, too much media out there, too many blogs actually decrying things that are people trying to do or do things in a good way, mm. in a bad manner. They don't know the people, and just basically jump on the bandwagon. Mm. And I think the sooner that we can stop that happening, the better. So any kind mm. of help for Steve would be grateful. Thank you, Steve. I, I think I think that's 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 right. But I think the sort of algorithmic nature of a lot of social oh. media means that you end up in your own little silo. Whereas you know, if someone made an outrageous comment in front of people, their friends, they might have turned around and said, "Well, that's a bit out of order." But unfortunately, you're almost in this yeah. social media silo where everyone is being equally unkind, as you put Absolutely. it. As, uh, as the other people, think, so it almost I gives sort of license to that way of thinking. It was the media <coughs> that basically was drummed it, the trolls, etc., mm. all the time, and her concerns about it. And that's what actually really triggered it. It's really mm. bad. Okay, right. Should we move on then? 7.2. Here's that short is. Originally, you that short right. as a community festival, which you provided, uh, provided uh, on that. Well, back to me again. Well, this is pretty much uh, the usual package that we put together, which is usually really successful. This is, remember, this is two full days of activity. Um, there's been some uplift, which has happened uh, elsewhere in the festival budget in terms of Bristol Ambulance. Um, but in terms of King's Rants, they've held the same... Uh, price, um, circus workshops are the same price, materials are a similar price. Um, I've, I've done a slight uplift on the graffiti artists, but that's only because we end up doing a very, very long session. Um, so that's not an increase in the actual hourly rate, that's just an increase in the hours. <coughs> um, 
because last year, I think as we discussed before, we were still doing stuff at six o'clock, we were weren't indeed. we? With the queue, people trying to do their graffiti boards, yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, we now have, we had a sort of, um, as you've seen the actions, we have a youth budget <coughs> for the festival of 5k and this is a little bit over so we have to come from the same code but just another little pot of money. Yeah. Anyone got any questions uh, on this at all? Sorry, could you say one thing? It's sort of in there, but it might be hidden in the body of the report. We've, we've penciled in, provisionally booked, um, a potential Olympian BMX rider as uh, to do demos for us for two days. Right. However, because he makes his living out of it, um, he, if he's called to another festival or something or another event, then we'll have to get someone else. But okay. In theory, that some someone we might be able to say. Uh, his name's what's his name? Clark. Uh, Jack. Jack Clark. No, I think he's, <coughs> he's all over social media in a positive way. But we might be able to headline use that as a, another yeah. little promo thing for the right. festival. Seven point three. Bradley Stoking Bloom update by Steam Group. And I just yeah. um, you've got a yeah. report. So yeah. you've got the written report, um, yeah. and then I've got a verb, uh, an email report as well, right. just to add on to this report because that was from January. So Bradley Stoking Bloom added three rows of hedging plants behind the beach hedge. We had to replant a couple of beaches too as they <coughs> with exposed roots. They're just whips, so it'll take a while before they have much impact. We've also planted a few bird, bird cherry and rowan, and we would like to install a few bird boxes. Our last work day was the beginning of Storm Kira, so only three brave souls ventured out. But the area behind Brookway Doctor Surgery was weeded, pruned, litter picked, planted. Past clear, <coughs> swept, drains emptied, and also Manor Farm roundabout and corners. There was a lot of blackthorn cuttings which had been put on top of the line of day lilies under the rail, which took a long time to remove. The dog and gate sign had been removed for repair. Palmer's Corner and Beehive roundabouts have also been tidied up. Our next work day will be another tidy up session starting around Aztec. In conjunction with the Bradley Stoke Zero Carbon Group, there's a plan to host an Earth Hour picnic in the dark from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on March the 28th with the usual fun, i.e. glow-in-the-dark bowling, making s'mores, stargazing, telling stories by torchlight and bat-watching. It will be free to come along. <coughs> it's a fun way to promote a serious message. We're thinking of hosting this at Jubilee Green, as although it is brighter, it is more accessible than Savage's Wood. And then she said, a small group I've met to discuss restarting the carnival. We envisage it being brought forward as a spring event and being on Friday the 8th of May and having a BE Day theme. There will be a poster competition for the schools after the parade. <coughs> there will be a street party and I hope that the tables will be booked in advance by groups and families with prizes for the best decorated table. There's a plan for stalls in the evening. We're hoping to have an outdoor screening of Dad's Army. She oh. says, so I've approached um, a previous carnival member <coughs> to ask if we can claim the old carnival Facebook email and bank account. So I hope someone will be able to. that's actually a very interesting theme. But the spring theme, because Bradley Stroke, if you look, we have the summer festival in the community festival. We have for the autumn time we have the fireworks display, so that's actually so when we are having the winter time, 
they have the Christmas celebrations and other things. So it's <coughs> kind of like a spring thing, it's really great. And I welcome that and uh, thank you. The only uh, thing I comment I would make is I've never heard of cherry bird tree. Cherry bird tree. Is that is this new to me? I've heard of cherry tree, but cherry bird tree? Is that misprint? Or is it cherry something? That's what you've got. Bird cherry. Bird cherry. Bird cherry. Bird cherry. Bird cherry. Has anyone heard of that? God, no. <laughs> I have to look it up, but yes, it, that's correct. <laughs> well, how is that different from the normal cherry tree then? There's a different variety that's <laughs> particularly Double attractive to birds. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeff, I'd, I'd just like to say that uh, Sarah Messenger is basically behind this one again, and Denise Evans, they are the people which are oh, really yeah. sort of pushing this for the carnival. But I'd like to say thank you for Andy, and, and they've got a hard act to follow because Andy really sort of pushed the boat out with the carnival. He helped me push the carnival, put the carnival in place in 2013, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and then carried it on for a few years. And it was a hell of a lot of work, absolutely amazing amount of work that Andy went through to do that. So, uh, well done, Andy. And I think it, you know, I think this is hopefully now will be another start for somebody trying to, to, to do something successful. So I think you can give behind them. It would be good. Okay, yeah. all right. Section 8, <coughs> the grant funding applications. Service level agreement. No, 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 that one. 8 2, community development grant aid update by Brunswick Radio. You have that in your agenda nice, pack. Uh, you also have a representative yeah, yeah. from Brunswick Radio. Like to give us a, a verbal, uh, a verbal um, Yeah, so I'll just give you this was um, the January update that you've got in your packs but just to give you a, a quick summary as to what's happened in January um, in the month we've had 12 new radio programs um, come into our schedule which is a phenomenal amount of work from new people and old members mentoring and um, helping people come into the, the group so 12 new programs um, we've got um, previous well established programs now that are repeated in the week as well um, that have um, big listenerships that we know about do our online broadcasting and comments. Um, we've got a further five shows starting in the next couple of weeks or are um, in the pipeline in development. So lots of new programming is coming on, which um, are very varied from um, afternoons of tea, dance, big band type programming, um, the, the community content programs, um, another young couple of young people are going to do another show, um, and um, younger people doing dance, trance, and that kind of music late at night on Fridays. So a massive range of music programs and um, community content that's coming in. Um, socially, um, also, although we are a radio station and we broadcast, and that's really important, and it's great to have all these programs, I really want to say um, again how much of a community group it is and how we support each other um, through mental health issues that's already been raised. It is a big issue in the media and it is a big issue in the people that come into the radio station as well. Um, we have a number of people that suffer with um, depression and that is exacerbated by fear of missing out through things that are on social media. Even in the young adult world that is a, a, a real issue. Um, so we are there for each other in those situations. We have um, I'd say a young, a middle-aged presenter who recently lost his partner to, to cancer um, and has had a break from the radio station but has come back in because it's a safe space <coughs> for him to do something that's out of the world of work, out of his family and something that, that he can do just to, to escape what's happened recently in his life that's been pretty awful um, and, and, and the support is there in that group um, and, and we have another member who um, was rushed to hospital suddenly and made it to the top of the cardiology list which doesn't happen you don't go from um, from visiting the doctors to South Mead to the BRI to the um, cardiac surgeon uh, within 24 hours usually but this, this person did um, and we're supporting him as he, as he recovers from some pretty horrendous major 
um, psychological trauma really of going through that as well as major open heart surgery. So as well as a radio station we are supporting each other um, physically and mentally um, in all sorts of life events and it's been quite a tough time since Christmas with all these things, <coughs> these things going on but there's been some really good news stories as well. We have a young lad um, who volunteers for us who is um, really, he's really going places. If you want to see a young man taking an opportunity and running with it, this young lad is doing that with bells on. Um, so he's doing videos for us, he's got his own radio show and this week um, he had an article printed in National Youth Magazine, The Week Junior, um, and the article was all about Bradley Stoke Radio and um, his, um, his radio show that he does on there and, and what he's gained from, from being on air. So we, yeah, um, and we have had, um, we've been supporting another community radio station in the Bristol area with a bid for audio content fund for a social series um, that they're going to produce, which is uh, big news in the radio world. A grant of £10,000 has been awarded this particular community radio station where we're supporting radio stations, so Bradley Stoke Radio's logo has been banded around in the radio world with the likes of Absolute FM, Virgin Radio, um, and lots of other radio stations as well. So um, it, it's, we've had some real highs and some real lows, as well as working in the community and with each other. So it's been absolutely, yeah, it's been cracking since Christmas. Okay. And we're going to the old person's <laughs> afternoon tea party. Yeah, and our, our events are filling up, but I can't tell you all the events because that's the future, um, future reports. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thank you very much. It's really positive. Do you have comments, Brian? As you're well, only about the young man, because um, I, <coughs> I remember seeing it when I was at the part of the radio station, his email coming through to ask yeah. me to be engaged, and it was an amazing sort of um, email which came through just saying, say, just saying a little bit about him, that he was doing videos of this and that and everything else and putting them on YouTube. And how old is he now? Um, he's still 14. Still 14 years late, so I might shock you. I think he was about 13 at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing the stuff that he, he'd been putting together. Uh, so um, I'm really, really sort of part of the community radio station, mm -hmm. haven't we? And, and it's great. So our, yeah, our volunteer age group runs from 14 for that, that young man doing that, and he's putting some of our older members to shame, really. Um, so he's 14, but our oldest, oldest member is... Um, I have to be careful now. I think he's 87 and, and he's learned how to run the desk um, and, and operates the, equi the equipment and set up playlists and stuff and, and that's been quite a challenge to someone of that age but comes in every week with his wife and they do a radio show and that's, that's been amazing to see people learning new skills and being active and in, in the community and doing something really completely alien to them. Um, <coughs> In, in the more senior years. So, um, yeah, send them our way. Good stuff. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Sharon, any response from the surgery regarding the old age group? <coughs> the surgery. Not this one, the old age, older people. Oh, no, well, I was thinking, what's that got to do no, with the radio? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to get my thought processes. Um, no, I sent them all the stuff through and we dropped the stuff in, but I've heard nothing from them. So. Okay. But saying that, we've actually given out 64 tickets so far, so there's only 16 okay. tickets left. Oh, that's the yeah. Yeah. Okay, 8.3 grand A, nothing uh -huh. on that. 8.4 youth grand A, nothing on that. And 8.5 larger grand A. Sorry, I was just, just going to say that they they did at their representative. I forgot to mention it did send apologies. Oh right, she's okay. on annual leave. Well, that's um, quite a comprehensive report. You have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lots of very positive, very much stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> well, they're asking for a free room. So yeah, yeah, what we yeah. what we know, what we funded in the last the past couple of years. So it's five thousand pound plus free use of the arm room available for activity centre yeah, for no, the two thousand twenty twenty four. Basically, um, no, Elm Room's what they want, yeah. The only query I would have is, uh, they seem to be running this in all sorts of uh, wards and uh, towns. Um, the grant from, grant from Almondsbury is only 1500 
and uh, Yate didn't give anything. Nor is it Kingswood. Nor is it Wonder Woman. I'm pretty so sure they, because uh, those, I think those were newly established last year. Okay. So I'm pretty sure they will apply to, well, obviously okay. Kingswood, there's no the parish king in Kingswood, is there? No, but no, Yate, so. I'm pretty sure they will apply to Yate for yeah. grant funding. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, good. I think they were just trial projects in yeah. Kingswood and Yate. So has anyone got any questions on this? It's quite a significant amount of data in there. It's also brilliant. It's also brilliant. That's a good one. One of the issues um, I mentioned earlier, sorry to that, is children have to be picked up going to the new time, picked up now for lunch, then they have to be dropped back for the next session. So it's directly a bit of a journey. So that's otherwise four times they have to come forward if they actually make it a they can't do it as a whole day thing, it's all to do with Ofsted regulations uh, and that sort of thing. So yeah. they have to do it the way they do it. Yeah, awesome. It's different. It's, it's, different it's very right, different. It's yeah. a whole different ball game. Yeah. It's a whole day thing. Because we looked at that when they were in school, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's very it different. It's daycare. Yeah, legally different. Yeah. Legally different, isn't yes. it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of data here. Well, it's very well presented, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very well attended as well. It is, yeah. 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 Detailed, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay, so are we going to go with what they have requested on the front page? Okay, yeah, I think so. So all those in favour? And that is unanimous. It's a resource for the community. Yeah, it is. Right. Okay. Obviously, that's not this year's funding, that's from 2021 funding. Yeah, yeah. And they also asked for permission to use their room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 so the proposal is £5,000 plus free use of the Elm Room down at Bailey's Court Activity yeah. Centre. That's what they've used for the past couple of years. Because they used to be at the community school yeah. and paid a reduced rent. And then, unfortunately, the community school, I think, got um, a better offer for um, um, a you know, uh, like business. Uh, and so they said mm. to the place, being really sorry, but you can't come to us anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. So the Elm Room is smaller than they had at Bailey's Court, but um, oh, school. secondary school, but works fine. Yeah. They make use of the play area on yeah. the yeah. side yeah, as well. They do indeed. Mm. Okay then, next meeting <coughs> is the 6th of April at 7pm. Please be prompt. <laughs> right, meeting close. Bye.